So today we're gonna do a little bit different. If you know what Wordle is, this is a kind of similar concept, but this is Bordle. It's very much a TFT version of Wordle in that it's gonna show you two boards and you have to guess which one of those two boards wins the fight. You can hover over certain parts of the board to see what resources they have. I think maybe you can even see like stats on, on units and stuff. We'll try that in a second. Um, but yeah, basically yeah, there's a daily mode. You can do it every single day, kind of like Wordle is a daily thing. There's also an endless mode which is what we're gonna be doing today. And we're just gonna see how far we get. Uh, I, you know, I would say definitely play along with me. If you totally blow me out of the water, then, you know, let me know in the comments. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do more of this, but I figured it seemed fun. Like something that would be relatively interesting to try so we're gonna jump into it we're just gonna see how it goes uh so first and foremost let's see okay so yeah, you can see you can see abilities you can't see stats that's totally fine you can see their augments you can see the synergies that's really cool you can see the items so i will say that one of the most underrated parts of getting better in tft very much is understanding which board wins a fight now this seems like a, just a fun game but it actually is a great way to get better at the game too so and I'm not going to say that I have done my uh, my fair share of homework in TFT and Set 11. I've been kind of taking a step back from the competitive side of things to just make content and, and enjoy the game a bit more. But hopefully I'll still do pretty well. Anyways, so we have the Edge of Night Augment with two Edge of Knights versus a Rek'Sai 2. Pretty much no backline damage, right? It's just Kog'Maw 1, Senna 1. 3 Mythic is, you know, it's something. But I'm pretty sure this Rek'Sai can't kill both this Darius and this Yasuo. Darius also being ostensibly the strongest one cost in the set. If you wanted to you know, learn more about one costs in general, there's a video that I have on that and look at that. But that is to say that I think we are going to definitely say that Zed wins this fight. Yep. Uh, it also, so the cool thing is that it gives you the board value at the end too. It tells you where it was played, what rank it was played at, uh, you know, what actual round it was, and then also the percent chance to win. Now this is 86% chance to win. I'm pretty sure this is like total BS. I don't think this theorist board ever loses. I think this is just something that isn't uh, isn't quite working yet, right? I think they're, if you ever watch people stream TFT, sometimes they'll have like the meta TFT. Uh, I think it's meta TFT. It might be a Blitz thing actually, but it'll like say percent chance to win this round and it's like always wrong. So as I say, don't look too much at this. It's gonna be more so about who actually wins the fight. We go again. Okay, so this is later in the game. They have the Yorick Augment. Uh, they are, okay, so this person, let's actually start with the Zed player. So they have Long Shot. It looks like they have activated it. You know, they have their, their snipers focused. They have a lot of extra attack speed. Four sniper is pretty decent, but they're actually not four sniper. They're just two sniper. It's just two sniper. They have four, it looks like they have um, just two dryad, five hit. It's like they have the synergies actually. I don't have to try to figure that out on my own. That's nice. Uh, heroic grab bag is not super great, especially when it actually didn't result in any three starred things. I'm actually gonna go on a limb and also guess this is like a slightly lower ranked match. Precious Dummy is, is nice, but I don't think there's any way in hell that this board ever gets through this Yorick, right? There's a lack of ramp on the Ash, no Rage Blade or anything. The positioning is not great for this Gargoyle. Orin has a Rabadon. There's like no world in my mind where this Morgana ever, or this, this Morgana, this uh, this Yorick player ever loses. So I'm going to say Morgana wins. We're correct. Uh, and it was gold. Yeah, I think that makes sense. It's just a, it's just a slightly awkward board from the Ash player, I think. It didn't quite have what ash needs right ash wants a lot of ramp ash wants ash wants like a long fight and to get value from long fight and she's just not in there so we'll go again okay this is a cool one so this is ethereal blades shen in the back line he has six ghostly four behemoth not the most friendly in the world and only two shen items so this is actually maybe even a weaker morgana board right they're plus one ghostly plus one behemoth so the two of their augments are in just emblem value which isn't the end of the world right if you're reaching your break points which they are and four behemoth is actually pretty valuable when Shen gets a bunch of extra damage for having extra armor. So that's useful. And then Morgana player has Scapegoat, Martyr, and Inspiring Epitaph. Now, the big issues with this board I can see are, uh, are, are twofold. One, I think it's pretty easy for this Thresh to not get enough value in this matchup without the gar you know, how the Gargoyle is positioned. But even beyond that, I think it's very easy for... Uh, the Thresh to get blown up anyways because this is it. Shen is doing so much true damage. Because if Thelios does have a lot of ramp, rather a lot of damage in some ramp, right, with the Rage Blade, but I don't really see it being able to get through the, the front line. I think there's a very good chance. This injury like has a blue buff, but it's not doing too much damage either. You know, this is just five faded, two Arcanists, no sniper either. So I think it's almost, you know, a, a runaway fight from the, the Shen player. Yeah. It's just not likely that Metaphos could ever break through. So we'll go again. 
not sure how long we'll go. Maybe till we lose, maybe till we reach like 10 or something. We'll just go. Well, actually, it says, uh, it says 10 right here, so maybe we'll just stop us at 10. Anyways, so this is definitely an earlier game fight. They're both level 6. Or actually, level 6 versus level 5, so maybe like an end stage 2, beginning of stage 3 thing. Uh, they have Trist 1 <laughs> with the Last Whisper versus Lilia with 2 items. This one's pretty easy. Uh, so it is, is like probably a 3-1 fight, I'm guessing. This person was on streak, hit an early Lilia. Has Morgana with Shiv as well. This isn't close. It could also have just been like a 4-cost encounter, I guess, more than likely. Just because like they both have a 4-cost, and this guy's a level 5. So I bet that's probably what it is. Anyways, Morgana definitely wins this. There's just way more power on this board. Yeah. All right. Uh, this is a tougher one. So we have we do have Ash 2 with some ramp. They have four sniper, only two warden, with only a one star at Wowie. I should have three are they three warden? Yeah, they're a three warden right now. Uh they almost have some decent items. The Darius 2 holding a BT is a little bit suspect. It's not amazing. We'll look at the Morgana synergies real quick. Also, they have egg. So they, they probably have egg on bench here somewhere, right? Which is interesting. Hmm. And this person has new recruit in their combat and their augments, which is definitely a lot more more power in a combat. Uh, they are Nico one with two items. The Nico one, right? This Nico is probably gonna die to this Ash pretty quickly. It might get CC of the Tals pretty quickly as well. This Darius is gonna be pretty worthless, and it is holding an item. Uh, so like a lot of this board's value is kind of missing there. It has a set as well. You know, Soraka with two items. It's Lilia one, but I feel like overall, right? It's, it's five Sage. Let's see, five Sage, two Invoker, three Mythic, two Dragon Lord, two Heavenly, two Warden. It's just like a better looking front line in general, I would say. Uh, this front line is like really, really bad. It, it's funny because it actually looks not that bad because it just says two star unit, but it is a Darius too. It's not doing too much. And certainly like four Sniper and Ash are pretty good, but I think this front line just falls apart really quickly. They have a little bit extra crit value with the Kha'Zix, right? But that also means they're playing Kha'Zix too as well. I think what happens more than likely in this fight is that you know, obviously this board's not very strong either in terms of frontline, but they're missing their egg value. Um, this person has a lot of extra items on them. I think Morgana wins this. Yeah. Oh, interesting. Okay, 60% chance to win. I'm surprised it's not higher. I feel like this is a is pretty clearly a Morg W. <laughs> it's uh, it's just the Ash the Ash two is really good, and this is a common trap people fall into. They're like, okay, I have my two star four cost. I'm stable. I'm fine, but. While Ash 2 is very good, the rest of the board needs to match up with it, and it just did not there, right? Okay. Uh, Zed has... Okay, so they do have Anti-Heal in their Augment. They have Slam in, so they're trying to go fast 9, probably, but they're only level 7. And they have Baboom. Baboom being maybe the hardest part of this board to quantify, because it is a lot of bonus damage, but it's hard to tell exactly what that might do in a fight, right? On the other side, we have someone with a ton of items. Holy crap. Uh, they do have a Felios, which is like, again, not the best unit in the world right now, but it's well itemized. They have an Irelia, which also is not the best side of the monarch because she shreds anyways, but, or Sunders rather, sorry. That's the new, new fun word in the block for uh, <laughs> physical damage reduction or like armor reduction. Uh, they do have a Lowey 2 though, which is massive. They have a Thresh 2 with decent items, which is massive. Uh, they have Radiant Blue Buff on a Kindred, which honestly, it's not great value, but it's, it's definitely not Baboom value. Um, considering the Kindred has no extra synergies in, but it, it is probably getting decent damage. I wonder what the link is. I, I think uh, I think it's probably like an Aphelios Kindred link here. This is kind of a tough one. The Boom definitely makes this a bit more of a toss-up. It's five Mythic versus five Faded. I feel like the unit quality on the Morgana board is just a lot better. The Keeper positioning is not amazing, obviously. Uh, they're talking about his Keeper. I missed that earlier. It's not amazing, but it's, it's fine-ish. The TK is a TK1 with no Bruiser. I am almost positive, and Loon has no Umbral, right? So even though Baboom is a lot more valuable than the Masterwork Artifact thingy here, the Radiant Refractor, I think this board actually lives long enough to ramp up and just win this. So I'm going to say Morgana wins. Yeah. It's just, again, it's like Augments are good, but the board isn't quite upgraded enough. The front line is not quite good enough. Oh, okay. I mean, this one's very easy if they got a freebie. It's the Fortune Player. <laughs> So we have, uh, dude, this guy's game looks like they were having a good time. Uh, this is like the, the the dream game, right? You get the fortune spot on the Sentinel, and you get a fortune spot from Augment, and you just go right for seven fortune. Uh, this guy's going to hit Annie and have like the best game of their life. So while they lose the fight guaranteed here, right, because this is just upgraded frontline, a, a Lilia, and, you know, a target dummy with a way, like a really, really good item here to, for this big clump. It is 
very likely this guy will actually outplace this guy this game, but in this fight, it's definitely a clap. It's like not even remotely close. Okay, seven for 10. Let's see. Let's keep going. All right. Uh, this is the healing one, right? Oh, no, this is big gains. Big gains and martyr always look so similar to me. So it is a trick shot flex kind of thing. Oh, that's interesting. It's like a heavenly trick shot flex thing. Very cool. With not the most friendly in the world, right? It's no behemoth thresh. It's no bruiser TK. It looks like they're just trying to fit in mythic primarily. They have a bunch of backline carries. And a little Diana action. A lot of armor pen. There's armor pen here as well. Not the greatest looking board of all time. There's a Felios 2 here. I don't actually need to get faded though. No, it's not It's not the best board. I'm curious what they started with with big gains. Uh, I can imagine like maybe Kongo was on the board on 2-1. Maybe Barb was on the board on 2-1. So these guys have some extra HP. The TG augment is getting like very little value on this Diana 1. So I don't think, I think that's a big piece of weakness for this board. And then Heavenly Crown is like, I mean, you're getting Omnivamp on your backliners that both have healing and they're both not getting hit. So this board looks pretty weak so far. Go over this board. Uh, really big frontline, like massive frontliner here with a Bramble as well into all this AD. Uh, we have a Kiana who's like not doing super well. Melfight with a Spark not doing super well. Cause with the last of not doing super well, but they have Irelia. They have, okay, I didn't notice that. They have Irelia, they have a Wukong, and they have a Soraka too, and they also have a Zaya. Uh, I think it is very, 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 I'm surprised that they probably wanted to be your con and they just uh, <laughs> put in their backline by accident. I get that. We've all been there. They have Jewel Lotus as well. I think this Irelia on her own does more damage than literally their entire board. There's no way for Diana to wrap, right? I think one way to win this fight maybe is like somehow Diana gets a cheeky wrap and kills Irelia, which I, I don't think is possible at all here. They're also missing anti-heal. No anti-heal here is really big into the Nico who is getting declaw healing. They have a ton of extra components. I'm going to say that this is a Morgana win. Yeah, it was uh, not the greatest board from either end, but it worked out. Oh, this is Garen reroll without the hero augment. Interesting. So we have Call to Adventure. The Kale probably has quite a bit. The Kale is like probably here or something, right? It has a ton of AP more than likely. Branching out gave them a Story Weaver spat. So they're going to be, are they seven Story Weaver? They're five Story Weaver. They're looking for seven Story Weaver. Uh, more than likely, this is like a 4-2 spot or something, or like a 4-3 spot. Like they rolled for Galio and missed. And they also have Ascension with a bunch of frontline. I wonder if they just natural the Garen 3. This is versus oh rfc kindred interesting rfc kindred with blue buff jg syndra there's really not any frontline here and i there's no shred either i don't think they can kill this garen and i, I think this this kale will literally just kill the entire board on her own and zoe has rage blade as well so in the ramping fight you know syndra ramps as well but rage blade is always going to ramp a lot harder than this syndra and there's just more for line two ramp in general so i think this is a zed win yeah i think i'm surprised this is 60 percent because i feel like that is like very clearly a zed win all right, uh, we have Scapegoat, so they're getting some money. Hedge Fund, they're, they're, they're really trying to go nine. They're level eight right now, though, so keep that in mind. And Triforce with only two or three costs and items in a Cogma. Actually, I'm curious what they're trying to do here. Maybe they're trying to reroll like some kind of like, Soraka or Zoe type thing. These items, I think it's either you go nine or you reroll three costs, right? I used to play Lilia as well now that Lilia got better, but. Not the best looking board. But then we have Hodge Augment with Unleashed Arcana and Pandora's. And they have three item Nar 2, three item Kane 1, and three item Kindred 2. No frontline items at all. So this is a, this is a fight that like actually probably could be kind of close, right? Like neither of the boards are very upgraded. Looks like they're both trying to get to somewhere. Like this guy's probably like one off Nar 3 and like one off Kindred 3 or something, right? Uh, but this is like, I think this board is probably quite a bit worse. It, it's pretty far off from having an actual carry it's just Kogma 2 I think honestly this king can probably solve this entire board there's no MR uh no rather armor reduction or uh, or MR shred in this board but I think the, these two hyper tanks just have a really hard time dying in this, these matchups there's no anti-heal here right there is our ar armor pen but like it's an AP board and Morgana is not killing this stuff Kogma probably not killing this stuff I think these two probably just go crazy and then Kinder just prize good support so all right, cool. We got it. I mean, we got 10 in 15 minutes. I think that's probably a good stopping point for now. Maybe we'll do more of this. If you enjoyed this, please make sure to like the video uh, and subscribe. I appreciate it quite a bit if you do. And yeah, definitely uh, give Bortle a try. I'll, I'll have a link for it down in the description below. It is really fun. And 
just a good way to get better at TFT. So shout out to Meta TFT for putting this together. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.